Okay, is this is this on? Uh, oh, okay, all right. Yeah, we're gonna do a reel. Perfect, perfect. All right. Today's game open tab off is called Master Debater. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Master Debaters, the game of sticky situa sticky situations. It's the Smosh edition. It's the Smosh Smosh edition of the game, and you're gonna be playing this game for a really large number of players, four to sixteen. It's ages twelve and up, and thirty to ninety minutes. Twelve and up. Master Debaters is twelve. Master debaters, 12 and up. In the game, you're going to be playing as debaters, people who like to master debate, debating, who are debating masters. And in the game, you're going to be getting a number. You're gonna take a number, depending on the number of players in the game, and you're going to then get a card that is going to involve two players in the group debating. You're gonna be choosing between the numbers in the middle of the pile, in the middle of the pile in the center of the board, and you're going to draw those numbers, and those people are going to be flipping a coin. The person who gets a certain number on the coin is going to debate a certain position. And there's quite a few different types of positions, right? You've got only dessert for every meal, you've got only salad for every meal, and you have to debate those positions. Or, which is worse, abnormally large hands, or abnormally large feet? Or how about fortune cookies, a good fun dessert, the cardboard box of the cookie world? There's so many other ones of these things going on here. And you're basically just going to be de debating each other and trying to determine who's the best. Now, of course, only the judge really is gonna have the final say here, but there's a jury and the jury is gonna have pens and this paper here, and they're gonna be able to write down who they think is the winner. Hopefully the judge is gonna listen to them, but they don't necessarily have to. Every time you win a debate, you're gonna take the card as a point. And the game plays in rounds, depending on the number of players. If there is a even number of players, it'll play three rounds, and an odd number of the players, it'll play two or four rounds. Every round is going to go through until all the cards in the middle of the table have been picked up and the people have debated, and then it's going to go again. And the game is going to get quicker for each round, making it more and more frantic. All right, let me go ahead and show you what's in the game, Master Debaters. So here's the contents for Master Debaters, which you're going to get a timer here, which you can be able to turn, depending on the round, how long it's going to last. A coin here, which you can flip to determine which position you're going to be arguing over, and a ton of cards that have all different types of things that are going on. Here's a couple of examples, like which discount service is the best choice, or which is the worst, or which is more beneficial. What will you get in? Uh, what will you get your? What will get you further in life? And then of course these cards here, they're just number cards, depending on the number of players in the game. And you're going to take this number and you're going to take it and shuffle them up and this is going to begin the round of the game in which you're going to be going and giving everybody a card. I'll go up and tell you how exactly how to play the game though. So in an eight player game, you're going to take eight of these cards here from one to eight. You're going to shuffle these cards and you're going to deal them out into the middle of the table. Then you're going to span them out and give everybody a card. They're going to take their card and memorize their number. That's their number for the rest of the game. After that, the person who got one is going to be the judge. The judge is actually going to take all the cards, make sure they're all mixed up in the middle of the table and flip over two. After you flip over two, you're going to draw a card and that will be the debate topic. Then choose one of the players to flip a coin. And once they flip the coin, if it's one or two, that will be the dependent on their position. So if you flip to one, kids should spend more time playing outside. And if you flip to two, there's no reason for kids to play outside. In which case then, the judge is going to listen to them debate. There's gonna be 30 seconds roughly of debate from each side. Then there's gonna be 30 seconds of debate where they're gonna to talk to each other and like kind of debate back and forth, a little quarrel, which is also like 30 seconds there. After you're done doing that, the, then the judge is gonna sit and think about who he thought won the game. Not only that, but everybody else is also gonna give their input. How are they gonna do that? They're gonna have a pen you go ahead and take out from your handy dandy notebook, as well as a piece of paper here. They're gonna write down the name of the person they thought should be the winner. Of course, you should use a pencil if you wanna use, there's not a huge amount, so make sure you use a pencil so you can go ahead and erase it and use it for the rest of the game each person. And then after the judge has got all the different cards from all the different players, he's looked at them, he's kind of determining based on their feedback who he thinks should win, but overall the judge has his own say. And that person who wins the debate is gonna get the card as a point. And then in the next case, the, ne the second player, the person who had two, is going to be the new judge. You're gonna take cards from the table again and rinse and repeat. People are gonna continue debating throughout the game. After all the cards have been depleted, the next round will begin and time will seem to speed up. He'll go quicker and quicker. After the number of rounds, depending on the number of players, has been played out, whoever has the most cards left out at the end of the game is going to be the master debater, and that's the style of the game. Let's go ahead and show you a couple rounds of play and what people might say. So I'm about to show you how to play the game, and of course there's eight people here. You can just not see them, but they're definitely here. Hear them? 
Yeah, okay, so there's definitely eight players. And the judges went ahead and picked me and Grant. He was a two and I was a five. So we're going to be removed out of the uh, pile of cards in the middle of the table and a card will be chosen. Sport fans are extremely obnoxious or they're passionate people trying to spread their love. Which position do you want to take? Hmm, too bad, let's flip a coin. So I'll go ahead and flip the coin and see what happens. Oh, I got two. So they're passionate people trying to spread the love and you're going for extremely obnoxious. Let's go ahead and start the timer up. And go. Um, they're just all over the place. They cause riots whenever their teams lose. They cause riots whenever their teams win. They make noise. They have these obnoxious banners that block your sight when you actually go to the game to to watch. N make way too much noise. They should just sit there like golf and just just applaud when when they're doing their thing. It, it's just really over the top, you know. All right, he's gonna give me 30 seconds on the counter and then I'm gonna go and show you what it's all hey. about. Okay, so basically, he is completely wrong. And it's very simple. These sports fans are passionate people. They care about their hobby. It's something that's important because it brings families together. It brings other people that have never been part of a sport together. And even people who can't play sports, they at least get to watch it and share it with their loved ones, friends, and family. It's something they get to enjoy together. It's a really important experience throughout their time of, you know, even if you don't like sports, I think you can still understand that sports are a relative American pastime. And it's something that should be treasured. It's important to people. So after that goes and happens, <laughs> we are both going to have 30 seconds in which we're going to debate back and forth with each other and counter each other's points, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, I'm going to destroy him. So I don't think they're obnoxious at all. And loud is important. Loud is important because it shows your enthusiasm for something. And you have to have a, something. You have to have you a hobby. You can hear here. them cheering from miles away when you just not want to hear that. Don't you, you want to be happy? Isn't being happy important in your life? No, it's not. It's, it, it's all about being quiet and keeping no, yourself. No, quiet is not what it's all about. If you're loud, it means you love something. It shows that you care. What about people who just go around town destroying things? Well, that's a problem, and I address that. But realistically, it's a very small amount of sports fans. So after we went ahead and did that little open debate, then what's going to happen is all of the jury, everybody who's not the judge, is gonna take one of these pieces of paper and write down who they thought would win. Go ahead and write down. No, I'm, I'm just kidding, don't write down. Don't, don't waste your time doing that, come on, seriously. So what's gonna actually happen is after they've all written down, they're gonna pass the paper to the judge and the judge is actually gonna go ahead and make the final decision. And it's gonna be super obviously. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll, I'll be the judge now because it's very important, right? And as you can see, the judge voted my, well, the judge decided that I was uh, maybe too enthusiastic. So, okay, Grant won this round. But after that would happen, what's basically gonna happen, Grant? After that, then you're going to start from a new round. Uh, the next judge is going to draw two new players, draw the new card, read it out, and... Rinse and repeat? Rinse and repeat. That makes sense. And that's how you play the game Master Domainers. It's Smosh Edition, so it has all kinds of crazy little antics in the game. Uh, let's see what we got here. Cupcakes are superior for, uh, cupcakes are the superior form of cake. True or false, Grant? Uh, true, I think. Yeah, true as well for me. How about coconuts are nuts or coconuts are not nuts? Coconuts are not nuts. Not nuts, nuh -uh. You're on a road trip with a friend and taking your car, who should pay for gas? You or the passenger? The passenger. Yeah. How about, is peeing in the shower acceptable? Obviously. Yeah, yeah, of course. We agree on a lot of these things. And what's crazy about this game is because we agree on a lot of these things, we're gonna have to play devil advocate a lot. Yep. <laughs> so sometimes you're not gonna get the position you want. Uh, which skill is more useful, being able to touch your tongue with your elbow or being able to lift your leg behind your head? Like leg behind the head? head yeah. yeah, yeah. Is it weird to kiss with your eyes open? Yeah, it's, it's a little weird to kiss with your eyes open. But that's the aspect of the game, right? Trying to, they're all mundane things. They're all just kind of silly, they're kind of fun. It takes away from the political aspect mm -hmm. of the game and, or that kind of stuff like that. And it brings it more into the everyday mundane things that are funny. Is a spork a spoon or is it a fork? Uh, it's a fork. It's both, I don't know. Which is the better Smosh catchphrase? Friendship always wins or shut up? Shut up, shut up. Friendship but, always wins. <laughs> so anyway, that's how you play the game. That's basically the type of cards you're gonna get and the type of people you're gonna be playing with. Let's go ahead and tell you what I think about it. So Master Debaters is a pretty fun, crazy, zany party game, which involves debating about mundane, 
pointless things. Pineapples on pizza, spoons and forks. But that's what makes it fun, makes it engaging, and people aren't gonna get angry at this game. If anything, it's just gonna be enjoyable because people are always gonna be laughing. When I was playing with a bunch of my friends, it was just a crazy spontaneous debate about the most crazy topics that didn't mean anything, but that gave it so much life and so much energy. There's so many cards in this game. This is not even a half the cards in the entire game. There's so much replayability. If you like debate games, this is a really solid one. There's another one called Great Debate, which is nice, and it works as well. It's just a little more on the uh, more social aspect of things, and they can be a little more gritty. This is gonna be more on the fun, light-hearted light aspect of different uh, of different topics, right? And I think that's where it kind of shines through. There's a lot of debate games, but this one has that fun aspect where you're kind of trying to work out things that you might not even think about, right? I mean, there's so many of these topics that you're just not going to be like debating over, or even worse, things that you do debate over, but you probably shouldn't, which is worse, having your burp smell like farts or having green cloud appear every time you fart. What? But that's the idea of the game. So the Smosh edition for the Smosh, the Smosh edition for Master Debaters is a very solid game. It's family friendly and fun. You can take it a little which way you want if you want to get a little more grotesque, that's kind of up to you, but you don't need to have this good enjoyment. So if you like debating, if you enjoy messing with your friends and you want to hear about mundane topics and see what everybody else has to say about them, I would definitely suggest checking out Master Debaters.